Welcome everybody and welcome to the Ladybug Laboratory podcast. Uh, my name is Lily and I will be your host today. This podcast is a podcast about knitting, sewing, cross stitch, mostly knitting, but my crafty life in general. Um, today we've got several segments. We've got works in progress, finished objects, mail call, and then a new segment about questions before we finish up with books, cow, and prattle. So, um, without further ado, let's get started. You can find me on Instagram as ladybug.lily. You can find me on Ravelry as Ladybug Lily. And the podcast does have a Ravelry group, which you can find by going to the groups tab and searching Ladybug Laboratory Podcast. A couple of things that I'd like to mention about the group. Um, number one, there is a questions thread in the group. And I've mentioned in the past that I've been getting questions about certain things, specifically my blanket. Um, so if you have any questions, please go ahead and put them in that thread so that I can mention them on the podcast. Um, there are a few people who have messaged me instead, um, but if you do comment in the thread, I'll either respond there or answer on the podcast or both. So, the other thread that I have in there that I want to call your attention to is an introductions thread. Um, I've been getting a lot of emails and messages on Ravelry from people who watch the podcast, and I would absolutely love to know who you are. I feel like every day I get up here and I talk about what's going on in my life and who I am, um, and even though I mostly talk about knitting, sometimes it feels like you're sort of getting to know me through that and so I would absolutely love to know who watches my podcast so please go introduce yourself I want to know hang tight and I will mention the Ravelry group later so without further ado let's talk about works in progress today I only have two real works in progress um, the first one is a new work in progress that you haven't seen before it's in my little foxes bag by mama made waffles which I love and it is the flying Dutchman socks now if you have been watching the podcast for a while you'll remember when I got this bulkhead blues colorway it's by telltale yarn and they have a marine um, that's it's run by a good friend of mine and she does marine yarns and I mentioned how I had gotten it to go with oyster which was a gray and I said I was going to be making socks for my grandfather who um, is a sailor and I was gonna there was one with a sailboat motif in the side so I started those socks and I got through the cuff I am adapting the pattern to um, be for a men's size 11 or 12 um, it's originally supposed to be for like a women's size 8, but this is what the pattern looks like on the sock. Do you, so do you see that little sailboat there? That's what I'm going for. It's subtle, but it's nice. Well, I'm having a lot of trouble with it. The techniques that the pattern uses are similar to intarsia techniques, and I just can't make it work. So basically, it just looks like I screwed up. There's not a sailboat there, and I don't know how to fix it. So if you've done intarsia before, please, please let me know, because I'm really at a loss at this point. This has been in the naughty corner basically for two weeks now. I started it shortly after the I released my last podcast. Um, so that's my first work in progress. Again, I don't really know what to do with that, so please, if you have any suggestions, let me know. Second work in progress is my sun tag, and I have made a lot of progress on this. So, this is my sun tag, and last time, you can see the bottom, that little llama is where I was. So since then, I have expanded it out and up, and then I have done two shoulder flaps. Look at that. And I have gone back along the bottom and begun to create an applied garter strip to use as a tie. So basically, the way that this works is it goes on your back, okay, and then the two shoulder sections come over. They have little buttonholes at the end. So they'll cross 
and then there will be a button in the center of the thing on the back. They will button into that, and then these garter strips from the back come around and tie in the front to keep that one nice and stable. This is not for me, it's for my mother-in-law, who is slight... I don't know. I don't know. She's kind of my size, but kind of not. I think she might be like a little bit bigger, but not that much. And so I'm ha I did make this big and comfy because I'd much rather her have extra fabric than not have enough. But it is comfy, all right? And I think once it gets blocked out, it's going to be a lot bigger. So I do have a question for you guys. This is my sun tag so far. Um, I'm probably going to finish this garter strip tonight because I've already got this whole side and I'm just working on this and it's six stitches long. Here's my question. If you look at this, okay, you can see the edging and you know how garter stretches. So the reason that I decided to do this like that with that garter is because of course there's the garter edge of the whole sun tag. Well, should I apply around the edge of the garter an I cord? I have no idea. <laughs> so let me know. Um, I'm very curious as to what you guys think because I can't decide. I can't decide if it would make it too... Originally I was going to do an I cord, but I felt like that would be too painful. It's just a, just a thin cord. And I don't know if having an I cord on both sides of this would be better, if it would make it worse. I don't know. I can't decide. So let me know. I'm very curious. Um, but that is my second work in progress, which will soon, hopefully, be a finished object. And that's because it's part of um, Eva Christie, these are Eva Christie hand knittings, uh, Durbeville, I think I said that right, along, which is where you read the book Tess of the Durbervilles, and you knit a sontag as you read the book. I mean, it doesn't have to be literally while you're reading the book, but that's the idea. Um, and that ends September 12th, maybe? Something like that? So it should be done soon. And my final work in progress, I know I said I only had two real ones, so you can guess what the next one is. It's my cozy memories blanket, which I'm calling my stained glass blanket. So this was the first triangle that I created, okay? I finished another triangle! So, since last time, I have added the Pacific Crest Trail Square. And then this one is Socks That Rock Lightweight, by the way. And this Disco Dance Square, which is not actually Disco Dance, that's not what it's called, but that's from my Disco Dance Socks. Um, which were a work in progress last time. You will see those, I promise. Um, I added an oncoming storm square, which is also by Telltale Yarn. It's the same one that I'm doing the um, sailboat socks out of. And I added a cork square, which is just knit, pick, stroll. And then um, a pink sugar square which is this one, and this is like deep stash, like this is maybe the seventh skein of yarn I ever bought, okay? Um, followed by this one, which was Cascade, it's just like Cascade Heritage, it's kind of a generic purple that I'm gonna be using for socks for my brother. Um, then Decay, which is the yarn that I bought in Portland to make my Portland square out of, which clearly I haven't worked on this, that blanket, just this one, but we'll see. And then Las Vegas, which I will talk more about later, and a Ronco solid in like a red tonal. And then... I did something extra special, and I connected them! So this one is the Enchanted color, and it is gorgeous. I absolutely love it. 
So this is by um, Arbor Twist Studios, which is another friend of mine. Um, oh, there's also the Arbor Twist podcast, um, which is by Rachel, a friend of mine. And she also has an Etsy shop, and this is her Enchanted Colorway. And I had to get it. It is so beautiful. So that's my stained glass blanket. It's getting really big and I'm getting really excited. And as a side note, a lot of you guys who have asked me about um, how I make it, I do have the tutorials. I'm working on editing them and they should be up soon. I'm gonna be releasing them slowly so I don't release them all at once. And that way um, I'll have some saved up if I ever have to skip two weeks between podcasts instead of just one. So, last but lot, not least is my finished objects, and I bet you all can guess what the finished objects are this week, and you're correct. It's my disco dance socks. Look at those! Look at how bright those are! Oh my goodness! It makes me so happy, and I love how they like mirror each other in terms of the placement of the colors. It is so cool. I am so in love with these socks, and I'm so happy with them, and look how bright they are. They like wash my face out. That's, they're, you know, they're even a little bit brighter than how it's showing on the camera. Like, ah, I love them. I love these. So, um, these are my disco dance socks. I'm gonna pack them up as soon as this podcast is over, wrap them up for Christmas slash birthday slash anniversary. I don't know which one for Randall. So that is super duper exciting. And very quickly, the next segment would be on the table, which is where I do sewing. I don't have any sewing. And the one after that would be on the frame, which is my cross stitch, and I don't have any of that either. And soon, I really, really hope to have some progress on both of those. It's Labor Day weekend right now, so hopefully I'll be able to get something done this weekend. But for now, it's just been knitting, and I'll talk about why a little bit more in Prattle, but basically, life has been crazy. So, um, without further ado, let's move on to mail call. So mail call today is particularly special, and I'm actually still going through some of the stuff that I got in Portland, but I'm going to skip that for now and go back to it next week. And the reason is because Eva Christie of the Eva Christie Hand Knitting Podcast, which you should definitely watch, by the way, because she's wonderful, and I did a mini skein swap. So the reason I said I would come back to those two is because those two squares are from Eva. So this Las Vegas square is from Eva, and the Ronco Red square is from Eva, and I love them. I love them. Look at them. They fit perfectly into the blanket, and I have so many more to go through, and I'm so excited, and this little bag sits on the door, on the table next to my door, so that every day when I get home from work and I am stressed out and super crazy, I see it, and I remember that I have all of these tiny minis to look forward to, and I, oh my goodness, I'm so excited for this. And this particular ball, I want to draw attention to. Okay, this is something that Eva sent that was hand dyed near her home. I cannot believe it's not focusing. This is seriously irritating. Um, it was hand dyed near her, and. It is absolutely gorgeous. I actually tried to put it in my blanket and I had to frog it. This is the first time I have ever frogged something from my blanket because I went to put it where I ended up putting this Las Vegas square and one of the colors is a little bit similar to this purple and I felt like it was just washing the square out and as I was knitting it, it became more and more beautiful as I just saw the colors coming together and I realized I couldn't waste this yarn and put it next to something that would wash it out. So, I'm absolutely in love with this yarn. I'm in love with it. It is so beautiful and I can't wait to put it in my blanket when I get the chance. Um, side note, the camera is totally not doing it justice at all. At all! There, it, oh my goodness, because it's not focusing and it just looks like a fuzzy blob of color. I promise you this is the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. 
um, I will show that as soon as I get it knitted. But on that note, speaking of my blanket, I have a lot of things that I need to be working on for Christmas. And I'm very, very behind. So I am making a promise to you, which is that when I come back in two weeks, I need to have no more than two squares on my blanket. Two. That's the limit. So, with that said, I need you guys to hold me to that. <laughs> So that was my mail call for today. Um, Eva sent a very beautiful card and a ton of little extra goodies to go with that, but I didn't bring those over here because those were more personal. They were for me, and it's the yarn that that makes me so happy. She was she was very sweet and very good to me. So, um, moving on, we're gonna move on to a questions segment. So this segment is new, this podcast, and it is from um, my Ask the Ladybug thread in my Ravelry group. And I just wanted to address a couple of these questions on the podcast itself. Um, the first one is by Sharon, which who is Sharon in Connecticut on Ravelry. I'm assuming her name is Sharon. I didn't actually check. Um... And she says, no questions at the moment. I just have to tell you how much I like your stained glass blanket. Thank you, Sharon. I appreciate that. I've never been tempted to knit any of the cozy memory blankets before. Not sure why, because obviously everyone who's doing them just loves knitting them, but they never really appealed to me. Just the addition of the black borders between squares makes all the difference. Now I can see myself knitting it. Thanks. I'm really enjoying your podcasts. I found you through a recommendation of Eve, Eva of the Charm of It, podcast. I'll be watching Sharon. So thank you very much, Sharon. Um, and honestly, I actually got this idea from another project that I saw on Ravelry that I'll try and link to. Um, somebody had posted it in the Grocery Girls podcast forum, and I had the same reaction. I had never really been interested in them. I liked the concept, but I know I mentioned this before, I'm too obsessed with color, and I, I didn't Think I would be able to do it without planning out the whole blanket all at once. But as soon as I saw that picture of the glass or the black borders, it just made me think of stained glass and I thought it was stunning and I couldn't say no to it. Um, and I'm so so glad that I did do that because I'm in love with this project now as you've probably seen by the fact that it has monopolized my knitting for the past two months. So thank you, Sharon. I did respond in the thread to Sharon, but I wanted to uh, mention her on the podcast as well. So my next one is by Eva, actually, of Eva Christie Hand Knitting. And she's Pan Within on Ravelry, and she says, I'd like to know more about you being a teacher. Do you teach kindergarten, elementary, middle, or high? Do you have a specialist subject? So I do. Um, I teach eighth grade, and I teach English. Um, I teach at a local school, and I love, love, love my students. I love my job. It's one of my favorite things in the whole wide world. I am so happy that I went into this field. Um, that said, that is part of the reason that I am a little bit nervous about giving more um, personal information on this podcast. I don't talk so much about many of the things that are going on in my life um, that are more personal in nature, even though I, I would like to, um, because I do teach 13 and 14 year olds, and they have a skill of finding anything that is on the internet. And so my, my last name is not attached to this podcast in any way. Um, and I'm hoping that it is never discovered. I'm not using my real Google account. I'm not doing any of that. So that said, my students did manage to find my wedding website when I was engaged um, and planning the wedding. So I am prepared for the eventuality that a student of mine might find this. So I'm not putting anything particularly embarrassing on here, just in case. Um, 
nothing I would be ashamed of. <laughs> Not that there's much that I would be ashamed of in front of my students, but you know, a certain level of professionality. Um, which may be why I seem so guarded sometimes. So hopefully that doesn't come across that way. Um, but I absolutely love my job, Eva. Thank you for asking. And I believe I said I do teach English. I, oh my goodness, I just, I love my job. And one of the things that I love the most about it is that in English I can talk about so many different subjects and so many different topics with these 13 and 14 year olds and really engage them in these topics through reading and writing, um, which is really what I love the most about it. And I love math and I love science and I've really truly thought about teaching those as well and history too. But English is just right up my alley because I can basically pick what books we're going to read, what topic we're going to talk about, and I can cater it to the particular students that I have any given year, and I love it. I love it. I love my job. <laughs> so thank you for asking about that. Um, moving on, I want to talk about a little something else, which does have to do with my Ravelry group, and that is between two podcasts ago and this podcast, I hit two milestones in terms of subscribers. I hit the 100 subscribers and then I hit 200 subscribers. And I know that's not, you know, a lot in terms of, relatively in terms of podcasting royalty, right? But it's a lot for me. It's a lot more than I thought I would ever have. And I cannot express how much I appreciate you guys coming back and watching me again and again. And I don't know what you find valuable about this podcast, but people apparently like it. And so as a thank you, I, did, I am gonna do a giveaway. I have not decided what the giveaway is going to be yet, um, but I did wanna put a little caveat on that, which is that I don't wanna become a podcast that basically just does advertising or I don't wanna become I don't want it to become like a gimmick where I just give things away as an attempt to make you watch the podcast. I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to say is because I am so interested in this being more of a community thing, the way this is going to work is anyone can enter. It doesn't matter to me if you're international or not. Um, and all you have to do is be a subscriber of the podcast because that's who it's for and then go to the Ravelry group and when you join the Ravelry group I'm gonna have a thread and it's gonna be for the giveaway again I haven't decided what it's gonna be but all I need you to do is enter the giveaway by re replying to the thread and just tell me what you think is important about yourself. So tell me something about you. I want to get to know you guys. Um, yeah, and that's it. I, I guess I was thinking about asking for advice for the podcast, and I would like to hear that if you have it. Um, so I guess you can do either one. I, I'll put them both as possible prompts. But yeah, either advice for the podcast or um, something else that you can tell me about yourself. So. With that said, I'm very excited about that, and I will post that thread in the group um, by the time this podcast goes up. So with that said, let's move on. Let's talk about a few books that I've read. So recently I have read Silence, and I don't remember who it's by, but I'll put it in the down bar. Um, I, it's just a Kindle book, and it was, it was good. I mean, I read a lot of young adult literature, uh, because I do teach junior high, and it definitely fell into the young adult literature category. It was about um, a 15-year-old girl, and the whole premise, which you are introduced to in like the first four pages, so I don't feel like I'm spoiling anything, is that this girl has been silent for most of her life. She hasn't talked, and it's because she, well, I, I don't want to give too much away, but it's clear very early on that something sort of traumatic happened in her life that has caused her to be silent. And she, 
isn't particularly subtle, the author isn't particularly subtle about what it is that she is traumatized by, um, it does become very clear, it became very clear to me part of the way into the first chapter. Um, and so for me at least it was less of a suspense about what it was that she was traumatized by, but more I wanted to know how it was that she overcame it. Because you know that always happens in in a story, they overcome it, and um, there is this sort of cheesy romance thrown in there, but it's treated in a healthy manner, and that I appreciate because so often in young adult literature it's like, I love you! I can't live my life without you! And it's good to have a healthy relationship in a book that uh, my students might be reading. Um, so I read that in, you know, four days or something, <laughs> and after that I immediately downloaded the second book, which is Broken Silence, and it's about what happens after. And you can guess, based on that title, that she does break her silence, and it's about what happens after, and I love that, because I hate when those books end with happily ever after, and everything's gonna be okay, and this is about the fallout of what happens after she has spent 12 years of her life, or whatever it is, 10 years, I don't know, being silent, and what, what does that cause with her loved ones, with her life, how does that affect everything, and the turmoil that she has to go through just to overcome her own trauma, and after she's overcome it and she has broken her silence, how there's so much more turmoil that comes after that, and what that means and how it affects her and her family, and again, there's some very cheesy elements in it in relation to this love story and all this stuff, but that was really interesting to me, despite the fact that it's not, you know, award-winning writing, it it was good. It showed a lot of elements of human nature that I think we don't talk about often in literature, and I really loved it for that reason. Um, so that was what I have read this week. Next up is, of course, Knit Alongs. So you heard me mention my Sontag. Um, the D'Urberville Along is still going on, I believe, for another two weeks. It was six weeks out from August 1st, so something like two weeks. Um, in terms of the 50 points for Gryffindor, which is something that I have been doing, um, last time that I talked to you guys, I was at, oops, last time that I talked to you guys, um, I was at negative 80 points, and since then, I have finished my Disco Dance socks, and then I have done a ridiculous number of blanket squares. Yeah, the rest of it has been blanket squares. So that has brought me from negative 80 points all the way down to negative 61 points, which is awesome. So if I finish all of the things that I need to finish for Christmas, which I'm hoping I do because, you know, I need to, um, I should be in positive points by the end of the year. I don't know if I'll be back up to my 50 points, which is what I wanted to be at. But hopefully, hopefully I get there. And so then last time that I talked to you guys about the Glasgow Subway Knit Along, which is done by Eva Christie of the Eva Christie Hand Knitting Podcast, and the idea is that you knit, literally in meterage, your way around the Glasgow subway system. Um, Glasgow? Glasgow, I think. I don't know. Um, and so that started on June 1st, and it goes until the end of the year. There are, I believe, 13, well, there's 12 stops, but there's 13, no, 13, there's 13 connections that I have to do. Um, and it's a circle. So then, um, last time that I talked to you guys, I was at 3,100 meters, which put me at Partick. Okay. Um, today... I have, since then I have finished my second Disco Dance sock, and I've done a bunch of squares in the blanket, and I've also added a lot, but not all, of the work that I've done on my Sontag, um, and so that brings me up to 33,943 meters. 
Um, and, which brings me right over into Kelvin Hall. So I'm at the Kelvin Hall station now. I have a while to go before the next station, which is Hillhead. Come here, kitty. Come here. I closed the door so I could podcast in silence, and now he's trying to get out, and he's very confused. Anyway, so the next station is Hillhead, and that's at 4,120 meters, so I have about 200 meters to go. Um, I'm not going to get there by doing blanket squares, so what I need to do is work on some of my Christmas gifts. Goodness gracious. Come on up, kitty cat. Choo -choo -choo. I know, you want me to open the door. Come on up, though. I want to see you. I saw you last time. There we go. Hi kitty. Hi kitty. Come on. Come here. No? No inside? Okay. Um, so that's that for the Glasgow knitting. Uh, oh god. Glasgow subway knit along. The cat has distracted me. I apologize. Um, thank you guys, by the way, for saying how much you loved seeing Bodhi last time. I'm gonna move just a teensy bit. There we go. So... Um, the last thing for today is my prattle section, and this time I thought instead of going on about what I have done this week, um, because this week has just been crazy, crazy busy. The last two weeks have been, um, so last week school started on Thursday, and so then this was the first full week of school, and I have been running myself ragged, essentially, which is why I don't have that many works in progress. Um, and I haven't done anything on sewing or cross stitch. But I thought this week, instead of talking about that, because it was all work and there's not that much interesting about it, there's not so much to talk about, um, I would tell you a little bit about how I picked the name for my podcast. So, my podcast is the Ladybug Laboratory. Um, I originally came up with that name for the, the blog, and the reason I came up with Ladybug is because when I was in high school, I heard this song that I have not since been able to find anywhere on the internet called Lily the Ladybug. And I instantly became obsessed with ladybugs. When I got a phone, I figured out a way to make that song my ringtone, and I started collecting ladybugs, and my childhood bedroom has like ladybugs all over it. And um, the song, I still remember all the words, even though I can't find it anywhere, goes, there was a little ladybug, Lily was her name, a lovely little ladybug, very, very tame. Her spotted wings went flap, flap, flap. She flew through the air and she landed on my lap. Oh, Lily, that tickles. And then all the small children giggle because it's, you know, like a nursery rhyme song. Well, I had been very into ladybugs, very into ladybugs, and then when I went to make that blog, I wanted to incorporate ladybugs into the name, and I didn't know how, and it occurred to me that the blog was all about making things. And when I first started it, it wasn't just knitting. I made a lot of things. And I still, it's not just knitting, but it's mostly knitting now. I've gotten focused, if you will. Um, so I was like, well, it's making things, so I guess it's sort of like a laboratory. There you go. Ladybug laboratory. Alliteration. Um, so that is how I came up with the name for my podcast. I just transferred it over. It was already a name that I had. Um, yeah. So I hope that was informative for you today. I hope you loved this. Um, if you did, please subscribe or give it a thumbs up. And thank you all very, very much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Um, it it's very encouraging to know that every week people, or every other week, excuse me, uh, people want to tune into my life and my knitting and hear what I have to say. So, sorry there hasn't been much project talk this week. It's probably going to be a little bit of a shorter episode. But thank you all for tuning in anyway. And lucky you, you got to see Bodhi again. I love this little kitty cat. I love him. So, uh, yeah. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in two weeks. Bye.